Hello and welcome to the Print Together tutorial on how to create a business card in InDesign from start to finish. So in part one, we're going to look at setting up the document, looking at setting up good margins, appropriate print bleed area, background colors, and importing images. The first thing we're going to do is go into InDesign. We're going to set up a new document. So you're going to go File, New, and click Document. Now in here, we want to set our area to print. We don't need facing pages because we're not doing a booklet. All we're doing is a front and a back of the business card. So we'll deselect this. Now our business card we want to be 55 millimeters wide and 90 millimeters high. This is going to give us a portrait orientation. Columns and gutters we don't need to worry about. And the margins, I want to have a generous margin because I don't really don't want my text to be near the edge of the business card because that just doesn't look like it's been done well. So you could have an 8, 10 mil margin. In this instance, I'm going to work with 7 mil margin all around. I'll click that, it's linked, it'll do it to all of them. And I also want to set my bleed area. For business cards, we're going to set it to just 2 mil. And I'll explain in our third video why I do that. Okay, so if I click preview, that'll give me a quick look what we're looking like, that looks good. So I've got my art area, I've got my internal margin guide, and I've got my bleed guide. So I'll click OK, I'll create my document. Let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Pages. I want to have a double sided document, so I'm going to create a new page. So I've got a front and a back of the business card. In this instance, we're going to work on the back first. So we're going to import some images into the back of the document. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my rectangle tool. I'm just going to drag a box anywhere within the art area. Now I'm going to go to File, Place, and I'm going to find my images I want to import. So I'm going to import this one. Okay, now you can see it's a little bit pixelated, and that's basically because it's only showing me a kind of preview. So if I go to View, Overprint Preview, this will show me a much clearer image. It'll show me what's actually going to be printed in the sort of resolution. The reason I'm using this image is because I want to keep this card consistent with other brand items we've got, so website, Facebook. So if I just quickly jump across to the Print Together website, so I want to kind of keep this style and keep this theme going through through our business cards as well. I also want to keep this color palette and this typography style through. So when I'm designing my business card, I'm bearing this in mind so that when we give our business card to clients and the style looks similar to all of our other materials, so it's all part of the same brand. Let's jump back to InDesign. In theory, if I was to take a look at a preview of this, it shows me without the guides, shows me without the, the any bleed area. I feel it looks. So it looks okay, but it's a little bit boring and it doesn't really say what we do. So I'm going to add another image. I'm going to create another box, draw it over here. And this time I'll do place, I'll do command D, for a shortcut. I'm going to add this recycling bin. So you can see here it's pulled it in, but it's pulled it in bigger than the size of the box that I've allowed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the auto fill. Now it's going to scale it down to the width of the rectangular box. So if I bring my guides back on by going up to normal, um, I can see it's a little bit more to the right. So if I bring that across, the shadow on the bottom there is, is going closer to the to the trim area, but that's okay. It looks, I'm going to sort of work with my grids. I'm going to keep the shadow line around, around the sort of the grid line. So this looks okay, but it's a little bit weird because Victor's standing there. You can see his feet. It just doesn't quite look right. So what I'm going to do is play around with this a little bit more. I'm going to grab Victor and I'm going to spin him 180 degrees. And because my image background has got a transparent background, it shows Victor behind. So it looks like he's sort of coming out of the recycling paper bin. Now I'm going to bring him up to just in line with the other grid. So I've got basically a grid line here, I've got a grid line here. So if I was to take again, take a preview, take off the grids, I can see it's looking fairly balanced already. It's saying a little bit more about what we do. What I also want to do now is add a bit of a background. So I want to add a little bit of a background colour so that when it's printed onto this white paper, it's not a stark white. I want it to look a little bit more soft, a little bit more natural. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to Go back into preview so I can see all my guides. I'm going to create another rectangle, but this time I'm going to drag it from the bleed area. So this is outside of my artwork area, the bleed area. So if I grab a box over 
to the red bleed area. Now I'm going to go into swatches and I'm going to create a new swatch. You can see I can move the, the yellow, I can move the magenta, I can use the cyan and even the black to create whatever colour I want. But what I want is a really faint little bit of ink on the page just to take that stark white off. Create a bit of an off-white. So I'm actually going to set these manually to about 3% and you can hardly see it here but once I click OK I'll give you an example of what I've done. So go back selection tool. If I just drag this across just for a second just to show you the difference. So it's very subtle. It just creates a slight light beige which will just make it look like a more earthy natural colour in the background and it also sort of matches the, the website a little bit so it's sort of softer colour. So I'll drag that back out. Okay, but as you can see I've covered up all the other images so I need to basically send it behind the other images. So I'll go back to Object, Arrange, Sender Back. What you can see is I've got a background which goes all the way out to my bleed area. I've got the images placed over the top and if I do one final preview I'm pretty happy with that. So I think that's basically the back of my card done. 